It's June 24th, 1996, and we're just flying about 300, 400 feet. We're just circul circling at the head of the Malagawatch Harbor area, and uh, Denny's Basin is on the left of our screen here. And as you can see, there's a, a cut or a canal, the, the remains of an old canal about 1,000 feet long, dug to about four feet deep that allowed people from Marble Mountain to get to Orangeville instead of going all the way around. stabilized uh, cliff uh, in the back shore, uh, vegetated foreshore or poorly developed beach, uh, sandy, and some cobble boulder in the near shore, but less so here than we've been seeing elsewhere along the other coast. And uh, we're actually just coming up on Nihilus Point now. Reddish material is derived from the till. It's a reddish brown till in the area. The underlying geology is Windsor Group, uh, Carboniferous rocks mainly in this area. And uh, actually, there's quite a bit of stratified drift all through this area. And that's probably why we're getting the sandier beach material. Coming up to the head of this small bay, um, again, there's a bit of a there's a road and uh, wetland as opposed to beach. And as we make the turn around, uh, it's a little tight, but there's very little beach development. The road fringes right along. There's road fill along the side of the beach, side of the water. And then there's wetland at the head. Um, and mostly veg low vegetated shores all along the outer part of uh, this part of Malagawatch uh, Harbor. Heading out, out of Malagawatch. Uh, this is actually all part of the Malagawatch uh, Indian Reserve, I believe. Um, some of the housing down below. Very sandy area, I guess, because of the stratified drift, obviously, has a big role to play. And you can see the dune grass on the point. Um, some pebble cobble in the, in the uh, near shore, but very, very little compared to the outer shores. Some uh, buoys in the water, probably for anchorage as opposed to lobsters. And then a small barrier uh, across that uh, abatement. And then uh, heading out uh, past uh, towards uh, Campbell Point and the other part of uh, Malagawatch Harbor and the Indian Reserve. Uh, we're picking up, uh, again, uh, very low-lying shore in places, the barriers, and then switches into a partially uh, eroded scarp. Small island here. I'm not sure the name of it. Uh, there's some wetland, uh, mixed sediments, uh, pebble sand, cobble, and then a, uh, probably about a 25, 50-meter wide shoal all the way around it. Around the Campbell Point area, we have more uh, communities uh, of the Malgawatch uh, Indian Reserve, people living on the reserve, uh, probably in the oyster uh, farming and, uh, and fishing. As you can see, the shores here are poorly inhabited. It's quite wet uh, areas, uh, wetland uh, bog in behind. Some dune grass where you get in the sandy areas, sand beach, and then there's a shallow area just offshore. It's mostly sand with the isolated uh, cobbles and boulders. Coming around the point, uh, we have a nice old farm, uh, nicely grassed area coming into view in a minute. Traveling south on Big Harbor Island, you can see dune vegetation and sand deposits on this side of the headland, and then they, they decrease considerably as you come around the corner. But again, up by the wharf, you can see some sand deposits in the near shore, 
and then there's another uh, small barrier that closes off a wetland. It's uh, more pebble material along the shore, partially uh, eroded scarps. Then we come into a very long um, barrier, fringing uh, lagoon. There's a, a, a outlet just at the end here that's been closed off by uh, sand and pebble uh, material. And there's a bit of a groin sticking out with artificial material added. Well, it looks like gold gypsum or whatever. And then another barrier, new construction. We're heading for McCray Island. Come up over uh, McCray Island. Uh, we're getting into the area of Johnson's Cove, and Gillis Pond is in behind. The beautiful barrier. Uh, there's some old beach ridges in behind. You can see the trees on them. Uh, it's mostly sand. There's some pebble in the beach, and then offshore is mostly all sand as well. And then we come around. There's another barrier uh, in Johnson's Cove front of a, a pond, more overwash here, more pebbly material, uh, less sand, and then an erosional cliff, it's about uh, 10 meters, and a lot of lobster traps just offshore here. Artificial uh, boulders added uh, places, but the uh, back shore is very low lying, uh, some dune grass and some wetland vegetation. The shore itself is mostly pebble material, some sand. Then there's a wide shoal of more cobble boulder material, and you can see the lobster traps all lined up along here. Lobster season goes into July. Very beautiful spot. Going into McCray Cove. Uh, as we come around uh, this island, ready towards Birch Point, there's a harried spawning ground uh, all through this area. On this side of Big Harbor Island, uh, there's several coves or embayments. Uh, just in the foreground is an island that actually was in one of them with a flanking spit. As you look at the shore, it's mostly fringing beach, uh, pebble sand uh, material, more a shoal off Birch Point here, uh, cobble, boulder. And then in the next embayment, the fringy beach changes into two barrier beaches. And this is supposed to be a herring spawning ground area, so we'll make a circle around these barriers. First barrier is well treed, uh, there's no opening to the sea, whereas the second barrier is wider, lower, has large sand deposits both offshore and in the embayment sort of stagnant waters, and you can see it's still connected to the sea. That's probably a sort of a sandy wash over flat at one point, it became vegetated as it got uh, higher. As we circle along the back shore of uh, these embayments, uh, partly because it's a hairy and spawning area, we thought we'd have a more closer look at the area. You can see the uh, difference in the water quality between the pond and the sea at this barrier and the sand deposit just offshore. Sort of a wetland, uh, treed vegetation in the interior. As you come past uh, Birch Point into the next embayment, you see another small barrier that's cut the pond off from the sea. And then you get a really good view of the near shore or shore face uh, sand deposits that flanking spit off the island and the other island farther offshore. You see the sand deposits in this channel between the island and the mainland and the two small cuspid forelands which have formed and an extensive shoal that extends right across to the island and would be difficult to get across and navigate. 